All right. Well, hello again, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm back, this time with not Resident Evil. This time we have uh, A Link Between Worlds, which is one of the, the two unique Zelda games to the 3DS. Um, the other being the Triforce Heroes. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is kind of a follow-up to, uh, A Link to the Past. It's, I think, one of those, like, sequel but not sequel things. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, hope you all are ready to enjoy this here. Uh, go ahead and hope this FPS stops dropping here. Uh oh. Of course, right as we're about to start, it uh, it's it's doing this. Um. Okay, there we go. I was getting worried for a second there. All right, well, let's go ahead and. Uh, get into this. Actually, what I will ask, is there uh, any suggestions on a name we should use here for, for Link? Otherworld Link is a schmuck. Aw, <laughs> oh, poor Ravio. RGLTV. Alright. And then we'll 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 add in this. We'll we'll add in some FTK here. All right. So hopefully the uh, FPS stays up here. It was working just fine earlier, so hopefully we're good. And uh, let's go ahead and. Uh, Get on with this. All right. So, as with any good Zelda game, we have to start by uh, mashing text. No other way to start a Zelda game. <laughs> All right. But yeah, this uh, the intro isn't too exciting, at least not yet. So if there are donations, do feel free to uh, read them off. Thank you. We've got a twenty, a ten dollar donation from. So we Yosaga, are required to make. One uh, saying save. this marathon has been amazing and is going to such a good cause. Right Thank you for everyone for making it happen. Thank you, and Mad Mega X thirty X three eight one gave us a fifty dollar donation. Thank you, Mad Mega. If we don't make this save, Colin will come back and yell at us until we do. So, you know, want to make sure we we avoid that. But right now, you know, we've just, we've slept in, you know, and we're getting yelled at by our boss. Well, our boss sent his kid after us because uh, we didn't show up to work on time. So we're a bad employee or something. Yeah. Hope you guys have been uh, enjoying the marathon so far. I know we're coming up to a close here, but it looks like uh, we've done a pretty good job. So thank you all for for donating. Right. 
So, the captain of the guard for Hyrule Castle is so great that he left his sword. Apparently that's not necessary. So we've now been tasked to go bring it back to him. Of course, he's not at the castle, so we have to go back. You know, Goblin, that's my same reaction every time I think about going to work. Or at least most days. Alright. So, if you've played Link to the Past, but you haven't had the chance to play this yet, you're going to notice a lot of things look very similar. But then some things are very, very different. <coughs> Come on, guy. Stop talking to me. So money is very particular at the start of this game, and the money routing starts once we get in here. Um, this is perhaps the only Zelda game where we don't want to have too much money at the start. Um, so the money routing basically will run through the start of the first dungeon here. Um, where we can't go over a certain amount. Um, but, we want this 20 rupees right here. And then we're not going to get any more rupees until we get to the dungeon. I didn't mean to do that, but... And all right, work is... Oh, where's the other guy? There he is. One of those things. All right. So, in here, we're going to meet the uh, villain of the story. And, well, wouldn't you know it? There's a cutscene, we're just going to skip it. So we don't get to meet the villain of the story just yet. Soon. Look at this guy in his bunny hood here. So, any of you who have played Link to the Past, if you go to the Dark World without the Moon Pearl, you might remember Link turns into a bunny. No, well, that's why Ravio here wears a bunny suit. It's a bit of a throwback to that. So, eventually we're going to go to a Dark World, so to speak. Um, but it's not the same Dark World as Link to the Past. It's similar, but it's not the same. It's more like a, a parallel world. Alright, so we have to go uh, see the princess. Sorry, for a second there, <laughs> I was just like, wait, what am I doing again? Because <laughs> I just did a run of this game, like, a little bit ago to practice. And I don't know about you guys, but when you do, like, back-to-back -back runs, sometimes it's really easy to get mixed up with, like, okay, wait, what am I doing now? <laughs> Alright. 
Yeah, so now it's story time. Um, this is where the game kind of sets up the plot, tells you a bit of the history. Um, you, This is where some of the connection with Link to the Past happens. We are going to completely ignore it. Or here, we'll slash at the pictures. This is just a timed section, so we're just waiting. I usually go here and practice my spin attacks on this poor guard. But we just have to wait for Impa to show up. And then it's off to go meet the princess. We are just going to be doing some walking around for a little bit. Uh, so, actually, in a moment here. Uh, so, something we're about to do. Alright, something important in this game is we don't want to die. Um, because in this game, if we die, we lose all of our equipment. Well, all of our, our Y items here. We keep our sword, and if we have a shield, which we won't get in this run. Um, but you keep your shield, you keep your tunic, of course. And your lamp. But we don't want to die. Because we lose all our items. So, naturally, what I want to do is damage down to half a heart. Right. Like I said, we're not saving any more here. Oh, Base City Chronicles, thank you for the raid. Welcome, everyone. So here's another potential for story time, but we're going to skip the story. Right. And remember how I said we don't want to die? Well... We lose all our items. But we don't have any items, so who cares? <laughs> Alright. So now we gotta go find the sage, Osfala. I think his name is. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take some intentional damage here again. Okay, that was not on purpose. <laughs> Sometimes that guy's there. I've lately had him not be there. So I was like, yeah, let, let's try and be a little faster with it. But, of course, he was there. I didn't want that, uh, damn, <laughs> that death quite yet. Oh, see, now he goes to the right. Of course. back here. Right. So that's the last death we should take in the game here. Alright, so we take that death just to get us back here quicker. No, it is pretty spooky though. Um, at this point, now that we have the bow, that bow is an item we can lose if we die. Anything that has this purple bunny hood on it. Um, 
though we we have to be careful now. But just as with Link to the Past, we're going to be starting with Eastern Palace. Okay. That arrow shot there, it's really cool that it persists through the, uh, the screen transition there. Because that will kill the Octorok if he is in the way, like he was uh, when I died that first time there. Which is a bit unfortunate. There's nothing particularly dangerous in this dungeon. It's not that you can't die, but... There's nothing much to kill you here. But that will change, of course, as uh, the run goes on. So here I'm just going to take that damage, because it's quicker to do that than to wait for it to roll by and then go past it. We'll get our health back there anyway. Alright. Alright, so let's see if we can get some uh, good arrow shots coming up in a second here. These guys spin and some slashes, and they're gone. that. Alright. Let's see if I can get this. Nice. Got them all. Okay. Now, if you don't get all those switches shot, you lose a cycle of these platforms here. And that's always unfortunate. Here's a trick. Oh, not that way. There we go. Trick shot. There's a switch up there that we hit. Come on. Well, that was unfortunate. So these guys suck. They hop around, hard to hit. Alright, I shot that from way too far away. That's another one of those, uh, like, persisting through a screen transition shots. As long as you pass through, like, soon enough, you'll... You'll be able to hit lots of things, it's pretty cool. So here's the first boss of the game, and the main villain. You did. So he's like a magician, artist, dude. You know. Generally not good guy. So we just shoot some arrows into him, we run after him so that he moves along the wall faster. Alright, this one we have to do some sword hits. Oh no! Okay. That was close. Alright. 
So that's where he would, uh, the cutscene would have him splashing us into the wall. And that's where we learn about the wall merging mechanic. So what I want to do here is end up with 290 rupees. So I'm actually one short, which is unfortunate, but pretty easy to make up. Oh yeah, the music in this game is excellent. Absolutely. Probably should have tried to smash those pots, actually. Nice. It's a good game, it's worth it. I still don't want to save. Thanks, though. <laughs> so now we have some uh, cleanup to go do. Some shopping before we uh, get on to the next dungeon. So here's uh, Irene the Witch. We're going to be seeing her, hearing her quite a bit. She's going to take us places. <clears throat> so she's uh, our version of the bird in this game. And she can take us around these various weather veins that we activate. So we're not going to activate all of them. We're just going to activate the ones that we actually use. And there we go. 290. Rupee from a bush. It's like I wasn't even sure. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to ignore those desperate pleas for help. Um, and we're going to go back to the village. Right, and then now that we have that, we're going to get our running boots, our Pegasus shoes, Pegasus boots. Sorry, I, I'm pretty sure they're boots in this one. I want to say... I want to say in Minish Cap they are actually Pegasus shoes and not boots. Now I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, so we got our Pegasus boots, so now we can run. And... Now we're going to head on back over here. Because now that we can run fast, we also want to be able to, f uh, to swim. Alright. 
And uh, here's the most annoying sound in the game. Queen Zora here should save some of those fish to uh, feed the kids. Yeah. That's our goal here, after all. So now we have our flippers. And <clears throat> now's our shopping trip. And this is why we cannot have over 99 rupees left over. So we have to have somewhere between 290 and 299 by the time we finish that dungeon. And we need to have less than 100 by the time we get here. For this reason, there is something that we want that cost a hundred rupees, but we very particularly do not want to be able to afford it. Because what he's going to do is he's going to give us one freebie. And obviously, if there's one freebie, you want to use the freebie on the most expensive thing. So, here's our most expensive thing, the Ice Rod. Which, unlike Link to the Past, serves a purpose other than defeating Trinex. And one more item. We will be back to buy everything but the Boomerang later. Well, rent everything but the boomerang later. Alright. So now is the point when we really, really don't want to die. <laughs> so we're going to head over to the next dungeon here. Um, which is not Desert Palace, but is, uh, oh god, what is this called? House of Gales? House of Gales, yeah. I want to try to not grab those monster parts, just because they give us more text and, well, it's nothing really worthwhile for them. Oh cool, I got him. So this dungeon is our first real encounter with, uh, with some tricks. So here we're gonna stand kind of on the edge, use our tornado rod, and now we're lifted up here. With tornado rod and the fire rod are probably the most broken items in this game. Um, we won't really see why the fire rod is broken in this run, 
because uh, this is the glitchless one. But uh, I do encourage you guys to check out the uh, the any percent run. There is uh... oh, there is some usage of the fire rod there. Right, there's fire. Fire is hot. <laughs> Maybe don't walk into that. So, coming up here is one of my least favorite, actually it's probably my least favorite mini-boss of this entire game. Um, these are two, like, flame helmosaurs. Um, these guys kinda suck. There's no nice way to put it. Let's see if we can do with them nicely here. Nope, they're gonna do that. Okay. <sighs> Alright, so we're doing this. Yeah, so either you can... If you're really lucky, you can get both of them... Uh, trapped at once and attack them and you know they they both die really quickly or or that happens um, and it's RNG what they're gonna do because of course it is but uh, yeah they they can kill you if you're not if you're not too careful they can and will kill you Here's another fun trick. You're not supposed to be able to reach that from there. But, you know. We did. Come on. Alright. That green guy just makes a lot of noise. Right, these guys, we'd like to get more than one, ideally. Okay, this is bad. Oh, come on. Ooh, okay, that's... That was getting uncomfortable. There we go. Yeah, so sometimes that happens. Right, let's see if we can't get some hearts out of that. But yeah, so those, uh... You know, those guys, if they want you to have a bad day, they will. And, uh, here's this boss. I'm sure he has a name. I actually do not know it, though. So 
So this guy doesn't directly attack us. He just tries to push us off the edge. But we just have to break all his discs and then hop back on him and hit the eye. So two arrows and a sword slash will do it. There is a faster technique that uses bombs. But uh, it's pretty hard. Whereas this method is fairly safe. Right, that felt like a delayed hit there with the sword. our second boss of the game. Oh, nice. New incentives. By the way, if you have any uh, donations to read, now's a pretty good time for that. So, our third dungeon will be uh, a very familiar one to many of you. Uh, <clears throat> headed up Death Mountain. Sure, you, know, you guys are familiar with what's up here. Uh, the climb is a little more treacherous than uh, before. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hope we get a heart here. Good. Ah, all right. All right. So I am gonna intentionally take a hit on this one to get through all three of those. Just faster that way. All right. All right, cool, we got a heart there. It's always nice to get as many hearts as you can climbing up this.
Nice, we didn't get smacked with a boulder. Alright. So yeah. The boulders are, you know, not as bouncy and annoying as they are in uh, Link to the Past climbing up, but there's a lot more of them, and they do stuff like this. They just get in the way. But they're generally, like, you can actually avoid them, which is nice. So we're going to activate this one. Of course we're not going to save. And this is where it yells at us, hey, you've been playing too long, take a break. And this is where we say, you're not my mom, bird. <laughs> so as you can see there, and as you saw in the last dungeon, we really make use of the... Uh, the sort of, like, big range on the spin attacks here. Really make some good use of that. Don't hit me! I sometimes forget that you can't pick up that key with, uh... Yeah, we missed that cycle. Stupid mini Moldorm. Uh, sometimes forget that you can't pick up the key with the sword slash. Here we have Drunk Link with his hammer. One thing I will say is, uh, with this game, the movement is really fun in this game. Because <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's very similar to Link to the Past, just you have, like, 360 degrees of motion now instead of eight. So that's why I wanted to avoid that. Oh, because we get that little bit of, uh, little bit of text there. All right, so we're almost done with Tower of Hera. Uh, that might be... No, we're good. Okay. Oh, damn it. Stupid blue guys. Oh. So, anyone who remembers the Tower of Hera knows what boss we're coming up to. And it's not as much of a troll in this game, but it's still a troll. It still lives up to the name Trolldorn very well. And we're going to fight it with a bow, just to make it better. 
is an arrow shot's basically the equivalent of uh, two sword slashes. And, oops. Over here, there we go. <clears throat> and that's it. Nothing quite like trying to shoot Moldorm with <laughs> with a damn bow, you know? So a fun thing about this game is uh, you have quite a bit of freedom in your dungeon order. Um, and you have to do Eastern Palace first, but after that we can actually do Tower of Hera or House of Gale second. Um, it's completely up to you. It's pretty nice. And we have a lot of flexibility in the... I'm gonna keep calling it the Dark World, but uh, a lot of flexibility there. There's some things that have to come before others, but uh, for the most part we can do it in whatever order we want. <laughs> All right. So here we have to follow this ghost. See if you guys can get it. Did you guess right? right? This time we have to watch these two ghosts and go the direction they don't go. Which thankfully is this way. Alright. And now we have to follow three ghosts. I'm not watching this one. This one's super complicated. I don't know where they went. I'm just going to go down. So yeah, so these guys, uh, <clears throat> the first one, the ghost that you have to follow, always ends up on the right side. So you just have to pay attention after they stop dancing in circles, where the ghost that's all the way to the right goes. The second one, it's the ghost on top and the bottom, at the end of the dance, that you have to watch. Oh, what am I doing? This isn't linked to the past. I don't have to dash out of here. Yeah, uh, the ghost on the top and the bottom. That's all we need for that second one. And then the third one is always down. Right. So we come in here right now, even though we don't buy anything, to learn Quick Equip. And, uh... I'm pretty bad at Quick Equip cancels. It's a pretty important technique, especially if you do the glitched runs. That I need to get much better at. <laughs> but basically, there's a delay um, between item uses. And using the Quick Equip will allow us to skip that delay. Oh. Hello. 
Oh my god, I'm just like not dashing properly. Right, do I have the bow on? I do. Right, this guy here is kind of fun to fight. So yeah, two slashes, and then normally he would deflect your third attack. But uh, if you just shoot him with an arrow, that ruins that for him. Alright. Alright, I tried. <laughs> Try to get those cancels going, but I'm a little sloppy at them. Alright, so here we want to try to kill these guys all in pairs. The spin attacks, you know, just to. just for efficiency. I'm gonna grab these hearts. Just want to play it extra safe here. Well, you guys now succeeded in capturing all seven sages and the princess. So, that's not good. I love when the bomb throwers uh, kill each other. So this boss, uh, pretty similar to the last one, to the last fight with him. Except, uh, you know, if any of you guys remember fighting Aghanim 1 and Aghanim 2, there's a, a big difference between the two in Link to the Past. We're going to see a similar difference here. It should be this one. But he's gonna get upset. Where is he gonna go, though? Sweet, we got some swag ice. So that ice is just gonna hang out throughout this entire cutscene. Just looming right over his head. It doesn't actually accomplish anything, it just looks cool.
Alright, and here we go. Last boss arena. Except we get knocked out and, uh, well, we're not quite strong enough yet. <laughs> you're not kidding. Oh, you're not, you're not lying. Yeah, it's unfortunate that, uh... So the method of capture I'm using is the, uh, NTR capture. Which streams the game from the 3DS wirelessly. Um, and as long as you have a computer on the same network, you can capture that stream. So... It doesn't always, uh, come through amazingly. Alright. I'm gonna do a safety save here. I wouldn't normally, but... Just in case. Two, three, one. Twenty-three is number one. Classic. So you can push this from the other side, but you do end up taking some hits from the arrows if you do that. Uh, which I prefer to not do. Skip all that nonsense there. Just hop straight down. Okay, so if I don't mess up the throw, we can just use this bomb right here to hit that switch. Perfect. Right now we're about to meet Thief Girl. We're gonna get into her cell and then we're just gonna leave. I did not mean to pick that up. Well, we got two of the three monster park cutscenes. See if we can get a third. Alright, so each of these guys here are gonna drop a red rupee. Hopefully we get all of them. Alright, cool. We got them all. Because we actually do need to get um, a certain amount of money by the end of this dungeon. Which... You, you almost can't not... <laughs> But uh, we're going to go buy the rest of the, uh, the items that we need after this dungeon. Unfortunately, we can't run with her. 
if we start dashing in every way but the way I wanted to go, apparently. Uh, but if we start dashing, she'll stay behind, which is obviously not ideal. Right, if these guys grab her, they will take her back to the cell that you broke her out of. But we need to make sure that doesn't happen. Come on, get on the wall. Thank you. So yeah, you know, this is just your, your typical escort mission for the rest of this dungeon here. Are you kidding me? That bat's a jerk. Right, so we're gonna drop that bomb. That way it's ready for, the platform's ready for us when we get over here. Raise it and then drop another bomb. That raises that platform for us. Or birds. Are birds jerks? Alright, let's see if I can get her stuck here. Nice. I love watching that, just getting her stuck in the corner and she's just running into it. We're just going to ignore these guys. Well, we're going to hit that rat. Actually, I want that. Oh. Right, let's get the uh, bow on here. Hit that switch. So the boss in here does pose a bit of a threat. Um, only because we have somewhat low health. Bats aren't real. <laughs> exactly. Birds aren't real. They're just the uh, the stealth drone, stealth version of the drones. Uh, I missed it. Okay. Yep. So you can use that to ideally get on top of it the first time, and it saves you from waiting on that really slow platform there. Bats are cannon drones confirmed exactly. Alright, here we go. 
So here's uh, Stall Blind. Might remind you of a uh, of a link to the past boss, possibly. So I'm going to take the hit there so I can get inside of his uh, spin attack tornado and score a whole bunch of hits. Oh boy. This is a bad pattern. Unfortunately, this fight isn't as... Hello, hit him. Isn't as free as the Super Nintendo version of this fight. Um, I think there is a script to this fight, though. Um, if I remember correctly. Though I don't actually know that script, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Go ahead for the donation. Thank you. We have a... $35 donation from Bug Doctor saying thanks for hosting this awesome event. Bug Doctor, thank you for being part of this awesome event. Right, and back to you, Desert Eagle. Just gonna make our way back to Hyrule. This game's dark world is called Low Rule. You know, get it? <laughs> so, the next boss is also slightly dangerous, so I will make a safety save here just in case. Again, I don't anticipate needing it, but you never know. All right, we don't want to talk to him. He talks forever. We just want to come and buy some stuff. Um, so there's a big reason we do Thieves Town first, and it's so that the Sand Rod becomes available. And we can just do all our shopping at once. Oh, there's no, uh, there's no W in it either. It's just L-O-R-U-L-E. It's got to have the same number of letters as Hyrule, of course. No! I jumped down in the wrong spot, so we have to listen to this guy talk forever. Anyway, so just a, a lesson of things, uh, what not to do. I know, right? Talking, God. Just so much effort. Hmm. 
Oops. Sometimes I just get into text smashing mode and that's that. Alright. So here... We want to... This is our sneaking section. This is where, uh... Where he thinks he's Solid Snake. We have to avoid detection. Wow. Okay. You say so, game. If you say so. Get out of the way. Alright, so every time I try to go early here, this guy does get me. So, we're gonna follow him around back. This guy's sneaky. Um, it's really easy to accidentally get caught by him. I'm gonna switch to bombs here. We're gonna need those soon. And now we're on to Palace of Darkness, or Dark Palace. Oh god. This place is actually pretty dark. Uh, it's a pretty fun dungeon, once you learn it. There's an idiot in here somewhere. So the whole thing is we need to have a bunch of light shining down to the fur or to the bottom floor where the uh, the boss door is. And that was the first one of those. We'll be doing some more of them shortly here. But we gotta go get a key first. So there's another one of the light beams that we have to shine down. Ah, oh, I messed up the timing. There we go. So we got one of these master ores earlier. Now we have a second one. And we need two of them to upgrade our sword. So that's uh, another reason that we do the two dungeons that we've done first. But at the very least, that's why this dungeon is second. Alright. So now, back down to the basement we go.
Right. It's too bright in here. Let's turn out the light. Uh, and there it is. There's the third monster part. Anyway, it's too bright in here, so we gotta turn out the light so that we can see the floor. The design of this dungeon is really cool, I think. Um, definitely think it's one of my favorites. Just the whole concept of how it works. Alright, and there we go. The way to the boss door is clear. Fortunately, we still need the boss key. Try that again. Perfect. Alright, so we're gonna get one of these, fill up the magic. Just to make sure that we have full magic going into the boss here. Now hopefully, I don't miss the torch and we can actually get this started correctly. Alright, cool. Alright, so those three bombs are going to instantly hammer the boss right at the start. Alright, there we go. That's already phase one done. Oop. Uh, yeah, that actually. So we're guaranteed at least one of those darkness phases after three hits. Nice. Okay. And then after those first three, we have to get seven more hits. Um, he may decide that uh, he wants to make it go dark again. And that's just really completely up to whether Gemisaur wants to be a jerk or not. Thankfully, that was a pretty great fight, actually. Yeah, sorry about the, the random frame rate drops. It's been a little more spotty lately than usual. It's unfortunate. Alright. So now that we've done that, we are going to go back to the vacant house here. And go back to the light world. Because our goal now is to upgrade our sword. So, first things first, we gotta go tell our boss that his son's okay, he's not missing anymore. And then he will upgrade our sword for us. There we go, and that's the sword we're going to use for the rest of the game. So, 
much like uh, Link to the Past, we get our upgraded sword, and we go directly to Skullwoods. No. <laughs> ah. It's also really easy to bonk on, on uh, stuff in this game. So now we're in okay, uh, Skullwoods, where there are, surprise, a lot of skulls. Ah, usually you can sneak through there. As long as the mummy's on fire, you can just sort of walk through. <laughs> I was hoping for a for a heart, but so in this dungeon we're gonna get some more uh, neat dashing technique. All right, set that guy on fire so we can get around him. Set that guy on fire so we can get around him. No hearts, okay, that sucks. And then when I do finally get hearts somewhere, I can't grab them. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna switch over to the hammer here. Doing all right. How about yourself, Uberfunk? How are you doing? All right. So this room is uh like the party room. So we got a little bit of everyone in here. This hand in particular is the worst. So we're just gonna get rid of him. And hopefully we get this first try. Nice. So the hand is the worst there, because if you use the tornado rod underneath the hand, um, he just grabs you and takes you back to the beginning. Which isn't very fun. Switched bombs. Excuse me. Let the hand kill this guy. He's gonna give us a hand. And then we throw some bombs to kill that one. That's unfortunate. Okay. Oh, it's too far to the left. All right, so we want to do that dash there, because normally we're supposed to go down the stairs, wait on these really slow-moving platforms, and it just takes forever. You know? And we're trying to go fast here, so... Give heart, please. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Who has the patience for all that nonsense? Ah. Yep. 
It is so lovely that you can hookshot the eyes. Oh my god, it is so nice. Oh, saved it. Nice. Usually when I'm that close to the edge, I'm just going off. Alright, so here, we're gonna go up. Ouch. Actually, ouch, that hurt a lot. It's alright, there's some uh, parts we can get in a bit. Alright, so throw that eye there, we're gonna stand right here, grab this. Who cares about that chest there? We don't need it. It's actually the third Master Ore. Uh, hello? Please? <laughs> Thank you. Alright. Um, eyes are a great weapon, in case you didn't know that. I was keeping my eye on that guy. Uh, I wish Vox were here to do commentary with me on this one too. He would have hated that. <laughs> Alright. Now, I really gotta give a hand to this next boss here. Um, it's a pretty great design. Pretty fun boss. Yeah. In, uh, in any percent, this is one of the bosses we actually skip. There's a, a timing you can use the tornado rod with. And basically, you'll just get on top of the boss and walk right into the, the prize room, which is up there. Is Skullwitz. Right, so we're gonna go grab that heart down there. Because, uh. Yeah, it's nice to have health. That's three of the seven sages rescued. Alright, now on to the fourth one. So for the most part now, you know, we have all the items. For the most part, all we're gonna be doing is just clearing dungeons. The rest of the game. Hoping I could sneak through there, but should have known better. <laughs> hey. Alright. 
Oh. I think that's enough. Oop. Canceled the dash a bit late, but it's all good. So now we're going to bounce back and forth between the mire and the desert. And go into our next dungeon. that a bit early. All right, we're actually going into Desert Palace. Pretty interesting that they kept uh, a Light World dungeon from Link to the Past. So Desert Palace is still here. Just uh, now it's been elevated to a Dark World dungeon. Or a Low Roll dungeon, if you will. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. So this is, uh, this dungeon here is sort of like the one restricted dungeon. Um, if we are doing this with, uh, without glitches, this dungeon must come after Thieves Town. Otherwise we won't have the, the sand rod yet to do this. Yeah, I'm just gonna play that carefully there. Yeah, so the, the gimmick of this dungeon is basically, you know, <laughs> filling up the, the room with sand so that we can reach previously unreachable places. That's uh, generally the goal here. Slightly annoying. There we go. If you get close enough to the edge there, the sand pillars will uh, will come up to the side of the platform there, which is pretty great because that's where you want them to be. Those are always hearts, I think, which is nice. We get a nice uh, free health refill there. 
And we go into the back of desert. Which is a little bit longer this time. You know, with games like this, which are sequels, I always gotta wonder, like, who goes into the dungeons and remodels them between the games? Someone's gotta be doing it, right? This one's a little annoying dealing with these. Oh good, he's over there. Never mind, it was easy. Alright, so we need 200 rupees by the end of this dungeon, which we do have, of course. We have well, well over 200, thankfully. God, Menyun's a little slow tonight. But, uh, that chest back there, I'll point it out when we get there. But if, uh, if you happen to somehow not have 200 rupees at this point, which really is more impressive than having 200 rupees, um... Okay, good, got it. Um, there's a chest of 100 rupees over there. Right here, we're going to skip the intended puzzle and just do that. You know, it wants you to pick up that rock and do this all carefully, and we're just like, you know, we ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. And now we got our big key. So, making our way to the boss. Oops. For some reason, I just kind of brain farted. But yeah, that chest right there, that has a hundred rupees in it. Ow. Let me in! Here, I'm gonna charge up the spin and, well, get most of them at least. Pretty close to the end of this dungeon here. Um, we just have one more room left to fill with sand. I also love that you can just kind of nudge around those statues there. Oh, you jerk. Come on, sir. Over here. Down here. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if that was going to make it. Come on. Over here. There we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Alright, and there we go. This, this about finishes off this dungeon. Now we just gotta beat it. Again, these pots are always heart, hearts as well, which is nice. So we, as long as we didn't take too much damage, we can always get into this boss full health. And the main strategy here is where the boss is right now, we want to get to that square. Alright, so he's in our way. Now the reason we want to do that is whatever one of these platforms we're on last is if we fall, we'll return to that platform. So it's nice to have the central platform as your sort of home base during this fight. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Jeez. Uh, well, okay. That's... I haven't had that happen in a long time. Right, so yeah, so we're just gonna take that fall there. Once he starts charging the solar beam, you just switch to the other side, and there we go. So those small guys were being a bit of a bully there. So, oh, after Desert Palace, I warp to the wrong spot. That's what happens. <laughs> Let's try this one more time, but going to the right place. All right. So we need to go over here. Um, because there's a giant rock in the way of uh, Swamp Palace. And we need to blow it up. But since it's a giant rock, it takes a giant bomb to blow it up. So we gotta go get one of those. And this is the last thing we need to spend money on. 200 rupees for a giant ball. And the very first thing we do is use it right there. Alright. Now hopefully, this bomb doesn't get hit. Hookshot. Just keep everything away from this to be safe. Alright, there we go. So that drains the entrance to Swamp Palace.
And off we go. I know, right? I'm... It's it's inflation, man. It even hits low roll. Alright, so there's nothing terribly exciting in this dungeon yet, so if there are any donations out there, um, feel free to give those a read. Oops, I missed. Here's a fancy trick, though. Nope. Nope. We do have a donation of $20 yeah. from Anonymous uh, towards not. Baseball Stars 2 Best Actually, of 3. Actually saying, wrong. let me help, you've got the thing. But more like, sir, move. Thank you very much. There it is. Right, so that skips this whole, like, two minute long. Back to you, Beagle. A, a clever arrow shot there. Right. You're rude. Yeah, that, uh, the giant Bari there, um, once he, once it electrifies itself, ugh, you can just, uh, shoot it with an arrow. And it's all gone. So here we're going to be getting a safety back here. Um, it's not really for this dungeon, it's really for uh, the next one. Which uh, is a really rude dungeon, much as it is in uh, Link to the Pass. You want to make sure you hit that switch before you uh, alter the water level. Otherwise, you're gonna... Sir, why do you gotta be right there? Why do you gotta do that? Okay, so maybe the blue tunic was a bit for this dungeon too, I guess? It isn't normally, but... Oops, I already have it. Brain fart. <laughs> rude.
try this again. Alright, so we're gonna head through here. Now this room is nice. A nice strat. We normally have to fight all those guys, but if we... Well, okay. I guess we're fighting all those guys. I guess I got a little bit too close to the edge there, but uh, if you place yourself on the edge and you do a dash there, you will dash right over to this uh, outside part. Which allows you to skip fighting those guys. But I got a bit too close to the edge. Kong is the Houston Ashes of Baseball Stars too. <laughs> oh man. That, that's some shade right there. Sir? Get that nonsense out of here. Wow. Gonna be the one beating the church. <laughs> We're gonna have to get that in-depth sound analysis of uh, of the game there. All right. So here's our good friend Argus. Except instead of puffs, he has uh, eyeballs around him this time. Right. This is a bit uh, not great of a fight. So we use the ice rod here to cancel his hops up in the air. Well, we have to hit him. But it cancels his hops up in the air when you have enough magic. Sub to the channel. Yeah, let me uh, let me again express thanks to everyone who's uh, been donating to uh, to the cause here. Donating to Random X here to. Uh, help feed the kids and I believe families in general um, but in particular feeding the kids yeah if there are any donations this next part's a bit auto scrollery so uh, feel free to go ahead and read any of them off
no donations at this time, but do remember, every $5 gets you an entry into the raffle for some amazing parlors. Uh, we have some custom artwork, the merchandise from RGL TV, as well as some uh, really cool video game related merch and a video game from Next Level uh, Video Games. Additionally, uh, if you uh, donate every hundred dollars, we're going to play a bonus thank you game in two weeks from RGL TV staff during our Many Thanks Marathon, uh, which we already have uh, 34 games in. So get your donations in and we'll keep on playing for you. Back to you, De Desert Eagle. Oh yeah, whole ass bonus marathon. So this big guy over here, he needs to die. He can cause some problems if he gets fully activated. Oh god, you don't want to fall there. That's scary. Alright, I'm gonna take, again, another safety save here. This dungeon is evil, in particular this boss. This dungeon is the reason I got the blue tunic. If anyone's wondering. We just got a $5 donation from Uno Squid. Donated towards best of three and said, Bonus! Thank you very much for yet another. <laughs> Thank you very much for another donation. Sorry about the laughter in the background. <laughs> Those penguins are just awful. Oh man. A fifth game? I don't know. I, I think we need like ten. 
Can we reach 10? 10 bonus games? guy's annoying. We'll just burn him. That guy too. No! Alright. Well, that's unfortunate. So we are going to fall again here. This time it's on purpose, though. This uh, brings us right back up here. We don't have to wait to get all the way around. So we're getting pretty close to the worst room in the entire game. Pretty close to it. Not looking forward to this one. <laughs> so, let's see. Hopefully it goes well. I tried out a new trick when I was practicing this, and we're just going to do this, and hopefully, no? Okay. Alright, so they don't want to, they don't want to fall for the same trick. There we go. So those guys bounce you everywhere. This bridge is thin, you can fall off. It's just all around not fun. Ah, dang it. Alright. 
I, uh, I have to take a second. I'll be back very briefly here. Sorry. So, the annoying crackly ice bridge isn't gone yet, unfortunately, and then I just walked the wrong way for some reason. Uh, we have to deal with them one more time up here. And this one we just kind of walk around. This one we have to hit that torch. Now, those guys back there that are spitting bombs are actually really annoying, because as you can see, they can destroy the bridge. Which is somewhat unfortunate. Alright, we have full health, so let's go. This is the worst boss in the game. Do not want to be caught in those. I don't know why I did that. Right. Got that one. Yeah, that's why you don't want to get caught in those triangles. No, nope, don't. Nice, okay. Wow, one hit away from a two cycle. That's unfortunate. So I think if I actually didn't take the damage there, um, if you do still have sword beams, you will get double hits. Uh, your sword hit and your sword beam hit. So, uh... If I didn't take that damage at the beginning, that might have actually been a two cycle. But otherwise, that, that was a pretty good fight, actually. Yeah, thank you. Alright. One dungeon left. The only thing left to do now is, uh... 
Well, go to Turtle Rock. It's a Zelda staple to have Turtle Rock, you know? So it's kind of funny that Turtle Rock and uh, Ice Palace sort of switched places in this game. So here we gotta save these three turtles. Uh, let's see, it was in Link to the Past. It's in Link's Awakening. It's in this one. Um, I'm pretty sure it's in one of the Oracle games. Yeah, now that you mention it, maybe it's it's not in quite as many as I was uh, first thinking there. I think it's in one of, but not not in either of them. I, th I could have swore it was. I thought it was in like one of them. out of uh, Ice Rod isn't very great. There we go. Wait, what am I doing? I don't need that. Just hook shot that key. Don't have to deal with the intended strat for this room. Let's hit that before I forget again. Now there's a really cool strat in here, which hopefully I get. Well, hopefully I get first try, anyway. I'm not supposed to do that. Could you? Thank you. I just need to recover some magic to get over here. This is the one I knocked down. I need the bow for a second. And the ice sword. Skips quite a lot of stuff. Always really nice when you can skip a whole bunch of stuff like that. So, like, there's a lot of wrapping around this dungeon that we just skipped by doing that, and it is. Just wonderful. Oh, come on. There we go. One of these days, I'm gonna not immediately fall off the pillar like that. I swear.
Yeah, that is, uh, very unintended. <laughs> but, uh, really cool. The ice rod is really awesome. Oh, come on. <laughs> Lava bottle. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I see it. I don't know if I want to see it, but I see it. Alright, so when he starts... Okay. When he starts spinning, just go hit him, because he'll stop spinning right after you hit him. Or he hits you, I should say. Okay, this one... Just get out of the blast zone. My god, this is some bad RNG from him. Yeah. I mean, it is Turtle Rock after all. <laughs> Not, uh... Fiery butthole rock. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure Total Rock isn't in that one. Yeah. Desert Palace might be in there too. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> What's his name? Hothead, I think? In Link's Awakening? Tower of Flames. You know, Four Swords Adventures really is one of my favorite, uh, favorite Zelda games. <laughs> it's a really fun one. So for some reason here, we have to walk, like, a little bit out of that doorway. Otherwise, we can't call, uh, Iris's, uh, or Irene's broom. Why, I don't know, but... That's the only dungeon where we actually have to move. Yes. I agree. This is my second favorite Zelda. Yeah, Minish Cap is another excellent run, or excellent one. Run too, but that's uh, beside the point here. Here we go. So just like the last time we fought that guy without the, uh, the flaming ball and chain.
that uh, same technique works. Just two slashes, arrow shot, two slashes, arrow shot. Oh, oops. Helps if you hold the button to grab the statue to push it. I haven't really formed an opinion beyond uh, top three. All right, hold on. Let's make this an extra safe final dungeon here. God, these hands just being the memes that they always are. Really? Sir, was that necessary? Oh god, yeah, Dark Hyrule Castle is a bit rough. I agree. If it's the worst dungeon in the series, I... I don't know if I'd go that far. But, it's, it's up there. Water Temple has that one key that's like hard to hard to find, I think. And like it's either a non-issue because you didn't open that unnecessary door or uh or you did open the unnecessary door and you couldn't find that last key. Guess who's back? It's a nice game to just kind of, like, relax with, you know? Oh god, Zelda 2. Yeah, Zelda 2 is not for me. <laughs> I tried to like that game. I beat the game, but... Oh, I did not mean to put that out.
Oh my god. Thank you. Yeah, LTTP is actually my favorite Zelda. I mean, undeniably influenced by it's the first one I spent a lot of time with, but... I just enjoy the mechanics of it so much more than the others, which is why, uh... Which is why this one's my second favorite. Because this feels very similar. Uh, and it's like a kinda sorta sequel thing. Yeah, it's also a great one. For that reason, like it... It's not quite as handholdy as something like Ocarina of Time. Um, you know, where you have your navigator on your shoulder the entire game. But it's not like Zelda 1 where it's just like, <laughs> yeah, okay, here you go. There's a cave there. You should go in there probably. Clever little dash there. Yeah, usually if someone asks me, like, what Zelda game should they play first, I would say Twilight Princess. Because while it's not my favorite, or even in my top three, um... I do think it's the best Zelda game, personally. Okay, well that, that was silly and entirely my fault. <laughs> uh, did I miss the portal? <laughs> I'm not really sure what happened there. game right now is just being rude. We don't want this thing to get hit with ice. So we're gonna do that. Skyward is an amazing game. Absolutely love that game. Oh god, Manic. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> 
There is a 99% probability that boo. <laughs> Rope bombs and oil. Wait, wait. What are we playing? Uh Wand of Gamelon now? All right, here we go. This is this is the final boss. This is uh, Yuga Ganon or Yu Ganon, you know, whatever you want to call him. Stop with the nonsense. Uh, here comes the nonsense. This just is a time waste when he does that attack. took that hit. Nice. Okay. That... Well, that FPS is not great. <laughs> Hopefully that climbs back up there. Well, what am I doing? That's a skippable cutscene. <laughs> It's too worried about the FPS. When he gets you at that off speed. Every time, oh my god. This was a good Yu Ganon fight until that. <laughs> exactly. Let's just not mess up here, like that.
Right, this part's really easy. Just mash. <laughs> Literally it. All right, and let's hit him with the disrespect arrow. Double tennis. No, the, um... The capture is acting up. It's, it's not even the stream side, it's... It's purely how I'm streaming from the 3DS, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. But yeah, I don't know why, the last couple days it's really been having a fit. But we're about to hit time as soon as we uh, touch this Triforce here. Uh, this is CFW. My capture... Board comes in. in. In like two weeks. Yep. That's it. 235.27. That's not terrible. <laughs> but yeah, normally the CFW is okay for me, but this past two, three. days it's been kind of choppier than normal I was almost afraid I'd have to switch to emulator but uh... oh god I hope not
looks it looks okay on my end. Oh wait, maybe it's okay now. Hey. Look, it's the end. Uh, Comcast decided you guys didn't deserve credits, I guess, which is just rude, but you know, that that's pretty Comcast. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you guys for uh, hanging out during the run. Hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's always great talking about different Zeldas and and all that. So uh, if any of you guys haven't. You know, played this one. I encourage you to, you know, go try it out. We uh, we just started allowing emulator on the leaderboards for Link Between Worlds, so it's a, a much more accessible way to get in on the fun. Um, so hope to see many more people joining in on this. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, as I was mentioning uh, I'm using CFW or um, NTR to wirelessly stream my 3DS and uh, you know so as long as your computer's on the same network it can capture that but since it is a wireless stream you know the uh, the quality is questionable but uh, I have an actual capture uh, 3DS with a capture board coming soon, so we'll we'll get past this. But it's definitely a great way to stream 3DS stuff uh, if you 
can't afford the fairly expensive cost of getting a capture modded one. Um, yeah, it really is, and it's really easy to do. Um, if anyone you know wants any uh, guidance on like where to go for it, just let me know. I'd be happy to sort of show you the guides that I used and stuff. But uh, yeah, so with this. Thanks to uh, Heritman and uh, Flora. Let me get their full name. I, I always forget the rest of it. Okay, well, Discord just has Flora, so Heritman and Flora and Sirius Cord actually. Um, they've helped me a lot learning learning the run here. Flora Berry. That's it. That's the full name. Their full name. But uh, yeah, there is. Uh, there is a Discord for A Link Between Worlds speedrunning, if you're into this as well. Um, you can get that through the speedrun.com page. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, it's not hard to set up either. It's uh, the like CFW stuff. It's a lengthy process, but it's all pretty easy. The one thing you just need to make sure you have a way to read a micro SD card on your PC. As long as you have that, it's a pretty straightforward process. Just make sure you're. It has to be a new 3DS or 2DS. And I suggest making sure you're completely updated when you do it. Uh, but yeah. Well, with that, I will. Uh, I'll be done here. But again, thank you guys all for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for raising money for, or, or for donating to Random Acts to help feed the kids. And with that, I will see you guys in chat.